We're getting some breaking data from the Treasury Department on its funding needs. Steve Leisman joins us now. Hey, Steve. Good morning, Joe. The Treasury announcing it will auction $120 billion of Treasury securities in, in the coming quarter. Uh, that seems to be around what I've read is the expectation of the market. So unlike it is an increase, but unlike last time, not a, maybe not a huge surprise. We'll see how the market reacts. Treasury refunding $102 billion dollars. Uh, in the, uh, and then raising $9.8 billion in new cash. That's how you get to 112. It's saying it will continue to gradually increase coupon and auction sizes for at least one more quarter, and that's across tenors, two, three, five, seven, tens, and 30s. Didn't mention the 20 in terms of increasing sizes there. And it's going to boost, it seems to me, the two- to five-year notes more than the seven- to ten-year notes. So leaning just a touch more toward the earlier, shorter tenors uh, in, the, in the Treasury coupons. It will maintain current bill auction sizes, it says, and auction sizes will be reduced modestly, uh, sorry, bill auction sizes will be, reduced, will be reduced modestly beginning in early December. They also add they're making significant progress on a technical plan here to implement a regular buyback, essentially, of off-the-run securities that's expected in 2024. Joe, let me just be clear here. We're all sort of equity tourists in the fixed income market. We're watching this because obviously the fixed income market is going through something right now in terms of digesting a whole bunch of new uh, issuance coming down and financing these larger deficits. And we're stepping in to see how they're digesting this. I'm interested to see what's happening to the 10-year. It looks like pretty much unchanged, I think, if I'm right, maybe a little bit more on the 30-year. Um, they're was a big surprise. Fitch announced a downgrade the night before the August refunding. August refunding was larger in terms of what was expected. The Treasury since then, I think, has been out there basically telling people, look, expect bigger auction sizes, bigger coupons, um, and maybe this is less of a surprise to the bond market, maybe less of a surprise, therefore, to the equity market. Joe? Yeah, that, I mean... Go figure. It looks like we're improving. We're narrowing losses, and, and we're not down over 100 anymore. We're down about 150 on the Dow. Steve, I, I was asking Neela from ADP about uh, that number. So what happened last month? I mean, it was, a, was it a weak ADP number and then just a blockbuster uh, jobs number? And so she said it's the trend that matters, that they measure different things. Do, can we glean anything from, from the ADP number today? Joe, this is one of those things where um, it may well be that ADP has a better truth than the BLS has. We know the BLS has problems with its response rate. We know ADP's data is not imputed in any way. It is actual data. Whether or not it's doing the same things in terms of seasonal adjustment and other things when it comes to uh, what the BLS is doing, I don't know. Um, we just have to watch it over time, use it as an input in the trend, like Neela was saying. Um, I'd like to abandon it because it doesn't do a great job in following the BLS. It's just that their data seems to be good enough to say, you know what, this looks at least as good a picture as any of what's going on in the job market. So you got to I'm sorry, Joe, you know how electrons uh, in quantum physics can be in two places at once. Well, it yeah, may be I that the job I watch Breaking Bad. <laughs> Heisenberg. <laughs> Exactly. Well, it may be that the job market can at least have a couple realities on a short-term basis. Over time, you would think they'd come together. We, we can't get rid of it, Joe, because the data, I think, the data set is too good. Well, it makes a big difference. One of them is indicating a blockbuster jobs market, and the other seems Coming to down be, gradually. Right. Joe, I, I, the, tell you, I, I want to just tell you, we're working on another way of measuring the retail sales report working with the National Retail Federation. Nobody knows about this now. I'm just kind of giving you a sneak peek that's going to use actual credit card data to yeah. measure retail sales, and it's different from what the government reports. So I'm going to confuse it, you more is what I'm saying. Is it cool, a cooler number? It's a cooler... It, it, so far, it's been cooler. We're still adjusting it, working with the economists over there. Yeah. I shouldn't even say this now. They're going to get mad at me, but... But, but the idea is that this is actual 8 billion transactions a month we're going to be calculating and not right. imputing anything. And we're not going to be revising. So I'm very excited about this.